When you start navigating life from a rock solid foundation, life gets really fun. This is when your dating life transforms your personal relationships, any business goals, body goals, everything changes. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys the 10 micro habits that completely transformed my life. And if you start incorporating them now, you will be a completely different version of yourself by the new year. A theory called the butterfly effect was coined by Professor Lawrence at MIT, and it said very small changes can lead to massive effects in the future. Quantum physics says there's multiple versions of reality existing simultaneously. The one that you are experiencing is simply the one that you're most attuned to. If you think of when you turn on Spotify or Pandora, there's probably a station that you go to the most. That's the one you listen to the most. That's when you tune into the most. So all your experience is, is the one that you are attuned to, the version of yourself that you spend the most time with. Let me give you a very relatable example of different realities existing simultaneously. Imagine you have two different morning routines that you can follow. Routine A, you get up late, you look through your phone, you're rushing to get ready, you skip breakfast, you rush out the door and feel stressed as you start your day. And then you have routine B. You wake up a little bit early, you're able to sit in bed and do a little five minute breathwork meditation. You get up, you have some tea, healthy breakfast, you walk out the door in a calm, relaxed state. By choosing routine B, you are essentially jumping to a timeline where your day starts in a positive and calm way. Each version of the person that's gonna walk out the door based on each routine is going to have a completely different life experience because she's carrying a completely different momentum, a completely different energy. She's gonna have different conversations and a completely different experience. So when we talk about multiple versions of reality existing at the same time and what it's based on is what we're attuned to and we can easily shift from timeline to timeline based on our choices and our mindset, it really is that simple, you guys. So both versions of your morning exist as possibilities. The one that you experience is the one that you align with through your choices and mindset. So before I jump into the 10 micro habits that can change your life in six months by the end of the year, understand that these are the micro habits that lead to different versions of you, which will lead to a different version of your life experience. You are who you practice to be. You are who you practice to be, like I can't say it enough. If you think her, talk her, walk her, you will become her. You can't not because it's an internal change and our external world is reflective of our internal world, our beliefs. Our beliefs are bouncers. I say this all the time, our beliefs are bouncers. It's actually a book I'm working on, so stay tuned for that. But our beliefs are essentially holding the velvet rope to our life, deciding what we allow in. So let's go ahead and jump into the 10 micro habits that if you start incorporating right now, can change your life by the end of the year, can change your life and create a completely new version of yourself by the end of the year. Micro habit number one that will transform your life in six months, and this transformed everything for me, is fighting to understand. Stop fighting to win. If you have a type of personality like mine that's very rebellious, defiant, and always wants to be right, <laughs> this can hold your life hostage. My life completely changed when I read a book called The Toltec Secret to Happiness. It was a game changer for me. When I was trying to figure out why I was so fucked up in the head, I gravitated to that book and it talked about belief systems and most of the beliefs that we have are not even ours. And that's when I started realizing like, why am I always fighting to be right based on my belief? If I don't even know this belief is mine. And then it made me look at other people in the same way. Like, hmm, I wonder if they know if that belief is even theirs or if it was just molded. You know what I mean? So that's when I really started to just respect everyone's view of the world. I stopped fighting to be right and I started fighting to understand and I became so curious about, that's an interesting point of view. I wonder how they got there, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it became more of an exploration of people and conversations instead of wanting to always win. Using your energy and using your time fighting to force people to see life through your lens is a sure way to have a miserable life. 
So the tiny micro habit that you can start to incorporate is just allow people to have their viewpoints of the world. And if someone challenges you and wants you to see their view of the world and won't back off, all you have to say, and I have to say this weekly to friends when we get into a confrontation or a debate about something, I simply say, guess what? We don't have to agree on everything and we can still be friends. We don't have to agree on this and we can still be friends. Let's agree to disagree and guess what? We can still be friends. And it's funny how it just stops people in their tracks. And then they think to themselves, they're like, yeah, you're right. We don't have to agree on everything. And I still like you. Isn't that weird? And even in relationships, guess what? We don't have to agree, honey, and I still love you. You guys, this is a very simple one to incorporate immediately. Micro habit number two that will change your life in six months. Move slower to build better. You have to start treating your life like a game of chess. You need to zoom out and think, if I make this move, what move is the other person gonna make? And this goes back to what I started the video with, with every thought, every action, every move you make decides what version of yourself you're stepping into, which decide which version of your life you're stepping into. Stop attuning to the you that you're used to being and try to attune to the you that you want to be. Like I said, think her, speak her, walk her, present yourself to the world as if you are the you you want to be. And this can only happen if you slow down. I would like to say think before you think, <laughs> but that's, that's for a different video. So you just wanna think before you speak because that's what gets the momentum going. That's what holds you to the you you are. That's the you that you're attuned to. So if you wanna shift the momentum, it's like turning a big rig truck around. Don't send that text, don't make that snarky comment. <laughs> Think from the you that you want to be. What would she say? What would she do in this moment? How would she react? Really, really get into that mindset, you guys, because usually that person is navigating life with grace. Micro habit number three that will completely transform your life in six months, it completely transformed mine. And bear with me here. <laughs> it's using dating to build skill sets. Again, we need to zoom out. The problem with dating nowadays and why everybody hates it is because everyone is trying to make every guy Mr. Right. Just let him be Mr. Right now. You can use every single date, no matter how bad, no matter how boring, no matter what emotion it evokes with you. Let me just give you an example. So after a breakup I went through and once I started healing, I wanted to make sure that I never experienced that again because it was a pain that was like undescribable. I went on probably 200 first dates. I was on a mission to study human behavior. I was on a mission to build out my own skill sets, meaning like I had a really unhealthy attachment style. Um, I was very codependent. I was learning things about myself through dating. There were so many skills I cultivated during that time that have been a game changer for me that if you really start approaching dating from that mindset, like what can I learn? Can I work on being less judgmental? Can I work on being a better communicator? Can I work on being less reactive? Dating is no joke these days, as you guys know. Like we are all getting our asses handed to us constantly, men and women. We can all get into relationships that are dysfunctional. I'm saying if you want the creme de la creme relationship, I'm positive that there are skill sets that you can be building out in the dating process. I know that's an unconventional one, but that is a micro habit that I would suggest that you guys start incorporating before the end of the new year. Number four, be the top 1% by learning how to emotionally calibrate. I will tell you probably 97% of the world does not know how to do this. We weren't taught to do this, you know what I mean? This is something I actually had to teach myself how to do. And emotionally calibrating is not being non-reactive because that's suppressing. And then what happens then? You become passive aggressive. You're not moving from an emotional space because when emotions are high, intelligence is low. You're able to emotionally calibrate before you communicate what it is you want to say. I can actually give you guys a real-time example on how you need to emotionally calibrate and learn to pivot information so that it's conveyed in a proper way. So I was dating this guy about four months ago, crazy intelligent. Anyways, oftentimes he would get on these rampages about talking negatively about people and I don't engage in that, I don't enjoy that, I won't engage in that. So I got a little irritated inside obviously and then I calmed myself down and I just said can we please stop having this ignorant conversation 
that triggered him because obviously he's gone to MIT, bachelor's at Dartmouth. So he turns to me and he says, do you think you should be telling me anything about ignorance? He's like, I think you're the last person that should say anything about ignorance to me. And I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, noted. These are the moments where the internal battle becomes an external battle. Like if in that moment I couldn't emotionally calibrate and I just reacted to his insult, that's when all the relationships fall apart, you guys. That's why it's so powerful to be able to emotionally calibrate because you can breathe, center yourself, and then respond. So I said to him, because I still wanted to get my point across, I said to him, so-and-so, do you think this is the best way to use your intellect? I didn't say anything else, and he just stood there and looked back at me, because what can you say? The thing is, you guys, if you can learn to emotionally calibrate and speak from a place of intelligence, everything will shift in your life. All of your relationships will actually have movement. You'll be able to build. At least you can show up as the best version of yourself always. And when you leave a situation that doesn't work out, you feel good about yourself because you did everything you could in your power to be the best version of yourself. And I promise you, you will always feel good exiting those situations. And if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, well, you showed up as your best self and it still didn't work out. That's not the point of all of this, you guys. That's why I say you have to zoom out. We need intimate relationships to trigger us, to show us exactly where we are, to show us exactly what we need to work on. And in that moment, I was just like, oh God, like I'm really getting a grip on this. Like I'm really adulting, <laughs> finally, midlife. Anyway, micro habit number five that can change your life in six months is learning to dance up and down the emotional guidance scale. I talked about this in last week's video. Google it, download it, study it. Because whenever you're in a mood, find where you are on that scale and see what you have to do to climb it. it gives you somewhat of a starting point and then you can move from there. As I said in last week's video, guilt is the lowest vibration. Anger is actually like seven steps up. Blame is even better because you're right on the cusp of being hopeful. And that's when you swing to the sweet spot of the emotional guidance scale. So if you can learn to move your energy, to start moving your moods around, I promise you this will also change your life in six months. You know, sometimes when you get into a mood, I was in one like three weeks ago because I was dealing with something I didn't want to be dealing with. And I just felt like the emotion was fucking stuck in my body. I was just like, get out. You know what I mean? I knew I had to stop what I was doing. For me, I always go to plyos. I jump. I do these high jumps, high jumps, high jumps, high jumps until the energy literally moves. The reason why I specifically do plyos and high jumps is because when I land on my feet, it grounds me into my feet. So high jumps are what work for me. I do high jumps until I just get out of my head and into my feet. Point being, I needed to move the energy and I promise you guys it's effective. So try that the next time you're in a mood. Micro habit number six that will change your life in six months is repetition. Repetition of what? Repetition of the you that you want to be. I say you are who you practice to be. So the first thing you need to do is identify what you want. Because oftentimes, we have to become a better version of ourselves to get what we want. If you desire to be a wife and in a long-term relationship, are you nurturing? Are you understanding? Are you able to move as a team and stay on the same side when you face disagreements, obstacles? If you wanna step into a leadership role, it's not just about delegating, are you able to inspire from underneath? And what I mean is, are you able to identify people's strengths and weaknesses and literally I just have this vision of like just grabbing your entire company and just lifting them up and holding them up high and you are on the bottom you're the one that takes all the blows you are the ones that are holding this team up because that's what leaders do you know what I mean it's little things like that like if you want to reach body goals are you able to show up for yourself so there's different skill sets based on who you want to be and it's all about repetition of the same repetition of the same Talk her, walk her, you will become her. Micro habit number seven that will change your life in six months. And this isn't for everyone. I enjoy doing this. <laughs> it's controlling the momentum of your mind. And this happens mainly in social situations. Social situations where conversations are about gossip, drama, negativity. Try to create a solution-based response to all negativity. If your friend had a shitty experience, try to pivot it into a positive for her. All this is doing is exercising your own mind. I will say time and time again, sculpt your mind to shape your reality. 
micro habit number eight that will change your life in six months. And this is mainly applicable to your dating life. Don't send that text. I think texting is probably the worst thing you can do in the beginning of a relationship because you don't know each other and everything is up for interpretation, including tonality. And when we are interpreting, we're doing what? We're looking at the text with what? Our lens of the world, our belief system, based on what he used to say, based on what she said. It doesn't mean that that's what this person means, but that's all we gather the information from is past experiences. So I would really suggest if you wanna have more success and you wanna change the outcome of your dating experiences, do not send that text. I would also say, do not send that text when you're upset. Draft it, put it in your notes, sleep on it. Just do not send that text. Micro habit number nine that will change your life in six months is to start to feed your mind intentional data because a bored mind is the devil's playground. That is when you're conjuring up the craziest storylines. I promise you guys, if you're depressed, if you have anxiety, take an online course. Start feeding your mind and give it something to do. Start feeding your mind through any avenue you can. Reading books, poetry, motivational videos, audiobooks. There's a thousand different ways that you can stand guard on the doorway to your mind and intentionally feed it data. And last but not least is micro habit number 10 and my shameless plug <laughs> is to sculpt your mind to shape your reality. And I do this with my soul sync sessions. You guys, these really work. That's why I created them because I am an obsessive compulsive thinker. I ruminate like crazy and having these loop in my mind to a rhythmic pattern has been a game changer. There's a link in my stand store below if you want to check them out. I do them every morning, midday, every night, when I'm walking the dog, when I ride my bike, like I'm always flushing my mind. What you guys have to understand, these micro habits are a lifestyle. This is not a one-stop shop, a quick reboot and you're done. You're never done. You're never done. This is a lifestyle that you have to incorporate and I promise you it creates a life that you love. It creates a life that feels good because we have to make so many decisions constantly. And so oftentimes we don't have enough data to make a clear decision. So we have to base our decision on intuition. It can be a powerful guide. That's why all 10 of these micro habits will start to sculpt your mind to shape your reality. And if you start incorporating them now, I promise you, it will change your life by the end of the year. All right, guys, hopefully that video was helpful. I'm Angela Jean. I'm back posting every Wednesday. If you want to reach me directly, go to my Instagram and the links to my soul sync sessions are in the description box below. I'll see you guys soon.